Let's start with this weekend's NFL Draft. There were plenty of storylines to follow, but most eyes in our area were peeled for news of what would be for Michael Sam. Finally, that came late Saturday afternoon when we learned that the St. Louis Rams used their seventh round pick to take the SEC Defensive Player of the Year. This is what it sounded like on the ESPN broadcast. This is the moment where Michael Sam got the news that he is going to be a member of the St. Louis Rams. There you see him on the phone, and there you see the raw emotion. We've seen this so many times over and over again for so many players. ESPN then held that shot. Our TV and internet audiences are still looking at it for more than a minute. If you haven't seen it, it was kind of sweet to watch. You could see how overcame emotion, with emotion Sam was in that moment. He doubled over at one point, barely able to stand as he listened to Rams head coach Jeff Fisher tell him the news. Uh, it, it continues People who are watching it online or on TV with us are seeing right now he's being hugged, completely bent over at the waist, holding the phone and visibly sobbing as he's just hearing the news, hearing that he is in line to become a new member of the St. Louis Rams. Uh, it, it continues to go on. We're still watching it here in the studio. Sam then hangs up the phone, reaches for his boyfriend, gives him a kiss there and and then a warm embrace there was a lot of reaction to that being aired both good and bad yeah i mean and, and most of it i will say and remarkably so if you'd had the same event happen five ten years ago you probably would have had somewhat different reaction mostly positive both in terms of the journalistic coverage in terms of social media there were some folks out there who were who were saying some hateful things but for the most part the nation's and the world's reaction was pretty much what the reaction was here at MU and in Columbia when Sam announced that he was gay uh, earlier this year. Uh, yeah, this, everyone knew that this was going to happen, uh, that the likelihood of him getting drafted. Actually, they thought that he might have been drafted uh, higher than uh, round seven, but it, it happened almost toward the end of the draft, and I think there was some speculation as to as to whether or not he was going to get drafted as – as the clock kept ticking. And so when, when this happened, I think that, you know, there was not much of a surprise. I think the surprise was how long ESPN stayed with that shot. And, uh, some people have criticized ESPN for, for staying with it that long until the, you get the ultimate kiss. And it was well more than a minute. It was well more than a minute. And the fact that ESPN has continued to play that clip, that part of the clip, over mm -hmm. and over and over again. And, and there's been some, some criticism about that. It wasn't an accident. I mean, they had, I think they said they devoted several minutes of their planning meeting to just talking about how they were going to handle this if he was drafted. They obviously had a camera there. But what I thought was kind of interesting is that the person who was producing the NFL draft coverage for ESPN, Seth Markman, Seth Mar Markman is a younger guy and has a younger crew. And he said, I don't understand people thinking about the kiss being controversial. He said, you know, quite honestly, it was just another moment in the year for us. And so, you know, I think maybe that says something about the generational change and why this wasn't a big deal for some members of the ESPN crew. I mean, I, mean, I think it says a lot about the, the generational differences between maybe what you what you see in terms of those who are planning these events and the on-air talent, because there was a lot of conversation among the on-air talent about whether or not uh, ESPN did the did the right thing in 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 showing that. Some some said yes, some said no, and then you have others who say, okay, you show it, that's fine, but to continue to show it and, and generate this sort of controversy about uh, that moment is is probably a little bit much. Didn't you think it was interesting to see how quickly that some folks reacted officially when players or former players, you know, came out and criticized the kiss? I mean, a player for the Miami Dolphins, Don basically, Jones. he was he was penalized for it by his coach, and and he had to come on and basically apologize after the fact for what he said. Well, I think that there are a lot of people are surprised about that. I'm not surprised because the NFL is a brand. 
And if if you have players, coaches, administrators who bring controversy, negative controversy right. to the brand, then they're going to be penalized right away by the NFL. And I think that that has a lot to do with what happened with Miami. And then Miami has its own history right. of intolerance. Uh, last year, you had several players, including some some starters, mm-hmm. who were involved in, in, in serious bullying incidents that caused one player to leave the team. Uh, and so Miami, I think Miami just jumped at it right away and said, wait a minute, we're not going to even deal with this right now. I think it's really interesting, too, how both Sam and his new coach now, Jeff Fisher, were responding to media coverage. I mean, Fisher was – he was prepared, obviously, for it. They'd talked about it before they made the pick. And he's been focusing both during the draft day and yesterday when they brought Michael Sam in front of the the cameras for the first time in St. Louis. And he was very professional about it. Yes, we talked about it in our meetings, but this is about him being a good football player. And, you know, Sam tried to say the same thing. I mean, of course he wants to say that he's represented of the gay community and he wants to help anybody going through these same kind of problems but he knows he's not going to be a role model or anything else if he doesn't make, make the, team. the team he's got to make the team. Be the focus and, and, now. and I think that the Rams did a did a masterful job of handling this they basically said look we're going to make him available tomorrow just Michael Sam to deal with these issues but once once he's done with this it's about football we're going to we're going to look at him as a football player and he's going to have the opportunity to make this team as a football player so i think the way they handled it and their approach to it is is pretty good and i think that this is probably the right team yeah uh, in terms of Michael Sam being able to to make an NFL roster. There, there was some media speculation about whether or not the Rams were really putting themselves that much out there. Seventh round pick, if he doesn't make the team, no big deal. But there were other people who were saying, you know, I think that they made this choice realizing that he was going to get a chance to play for a little oh, bit. Oh, I think I think you're absolutely right. I think that's the they chose him because of his football talent and not necessarily as we're going to take one uh, for the team, for the NFL team, and, and, and use our draft pick to do this. And in terms of business, Amy, at least initially, and this stuff is going to play out over several months, but – Michael Sam's jersey, even though he doesn't have a real S- number selling yet. Selling out now, right? yeah. And the second best selling jersey from the draft, you know, after Johnny Manziel. So I think that's a pretty good initial start for him on the business we'll, side. We'll be watching all summer, see what happens yeah. come August.